What the fuck is it? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Young Dad Gaming. In this series I'm going to recount, reminisce, and review the games that I grew up on, as well as decide when or if my son will grow up on the same games, and which one should be avoided due to extreme violence, suggestive themes, and or because the game just sucks. Next up... I don't have a physical case anymore, but DOOM 64! Now, I know it's a little strange to go from Doom immediately to Doom 64 and completely skip Doom 2. Why? Because Doom 2 Hell on Earth was never released on Super Nintendo. It was only released on PC until Doom 3's inclusion as a special feature. Doom 64 is technically a sequel soft reboot of the Doom franchise, and I thought it would be fitting as Doom 64 is another game I grew up with, as well as recently being re-released on next-gen consoles. I was surprised when I was playing through this game again for this review. I had remembered so many of the levels, if not every single one. I haven't played this game since I last owned an N64, which is probably about 19 years ago, but I still perfectly remembered the layout, the music, the enemy locations, the puzzles, even the which walls to go <clears throat> on to find secret doors. It just showed me how much of this game was seared into my memory. But enough talk. Let's have at it. <clears throat> well, this is a pretty, pretty long intro that you can't skip. Ah, an iconic intro sequence that still holds up pretty well. The music perfectly sets the mood for the game. While the first Doom had a more rockin' soundtrack, this Doom had a much darker tone. Now this is the first time you'll realize you're not just playing Doom, but a much darker Doom. A good set of rules I had to learn to be able to beat Doom, which interestingly I found parallel to Zombieland. Cardio. Learn to use that sprint button and use it frequently. A standing target is a bloody dead target. And to be honest, I didn't know you can sprint in Doom until I played Ultimate Doom on the Xbox. Double tap. Don't be stingy with your ammo. Keep firing until there are nothing more than a nasty pile of jibs. Beware of bathrooms. In this case, bathrooms are keys, switches, and weapons. Whenever you see one, always be prepared to activate some sort of trap or spawning enemies. When in doubt, and I cannot stress this one enough, know your way out. Learn where the exits are, and don't be afraid to run away. Buckle up. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Growing up, I didn't even know there was a story to Doom 64. From what I could gather now as an adult is, the Earth government basically just said, I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Fucking A. Oh, oh. And then a, then a satellite says, yo, shit's bad up here. So a doom guy heads back to Mars to kill demons again. The first thing I noticed was how much the graphics had changed. The lighting effects always did and still do impress me. Now, this game is what made me love lighting effects and light reflections on the weapon sprites. Throughout Mars and Hell, you'll see a lot of familiar faces and guns, all with upgraded sprites as well as new and fresh level designs. My favorite new sprite being the pain elementals. While these guys are a giant pain in the ass, they look fantastic. I love this enemy so much that I researched the background of these guys and it's quite disgusting. They're the resurrected carcasses of the cacodemons you killed in Doom 1. And just look at them! They embody the term pain elemental. That it's not just a clever name. <laughs> and the skyboxes. Ugh. Okay, when I revisited this game as an adult, memories of the terrifying skyboxes came flooding back. No longer was it just a weird low-poly JPEG in the background, now it's a 64-bit JPEG in the background. 
but each one makes you feel alone. It makes you feel empty. As a kid, I tried my best to avoid looking at the background because of how uncomfortable they made me. Now, this specific skybox always frightened me as a kid. D do you remember the uh, the X Files intro where the dude's face like uh, uh, stretches? Uh, uh, uh. This skybox always reminded me of that, and I was 14 by the time I stopped being scared of the X Files intro. With improvement on vertical map design and some great moments where you're thrust into pitch blackness, the game gets very dark, and you fight through the final outpost only to be met with this message. You cackle as the familiarity of the situation occurs to you. The gateway to the demon's domain was too accessible. You realize the demons mock you with their invitation. It doesn't matter. The demons spawn like rats, and you have the grade AAA UAC poison they crave. Your bloodthirst scream shatters the teleport maze. Wait, what? The teleport... The teleport maze? <clears throat> Once again, and you find yourself amidst... Hell. Oh yeah, the, the demons tricked you into coming back to hell. Bummer. Doom Guy realizes a little too late that the demons had originally planned for this, but being that he's the Doom Guy, he just packs up his 13-inch cock and presses onwards. <laughs> The first mission in Hell does well as an introduction to what Hell is going to be like, and also to the Mancubuses. Man man Mancubi? Mancuboys. The Arachnotrons, and later, my absolute favorite, the Cyberdemon. My favorite BAMF. Mission 12 is where you first find the Laser, otherwise known as the Unmaker. When I first found this gun as Little Baby Ken, I felt like I wasn't allowed to use this gun, as if I was somehow forbidden to use this gun. It's probably because of what Doom Guy says when he picks it up. What the fuck is that? Uh, it looks like dried skin draped over a sled, but it absolutely kicks ass. And by this point, I also noticed that Doom 64 music in the game isn't really music, but disturbing ambient sounds such as an eerie silence throughout the UAC levels, but the hell levels is where you'll notice noises of people moaning in agony and babies crying in the distance, making hell feel much bigger than you realize. Yeah, pretty fucking atmospheric. For example, here is the intro music to Doom 64. Oh, oh, oops, uh, sorry. That was, that was Donkey Kong 64. I always get those two mixed up. Here's the correct song. DK64 soundtrack goes along a little too well with Doom 64. A lot of the sound effects from the original Doom are reused in this one, and with a few new ones added in. My favorite is the Pinky Grunts. It sounds just like Cousin Eddie's dog Snots choking on a bone in Christmas Vacation. Oh, he's just yakking on a bone. He got it up. And I have a strange thing to say about Mission 21. It reminds me of a game that it really shouldn't. Pikmin. Specifically, the Forest Naval. I think it's because that mission was dark and there were a lot of ledges that you needed to build around. Hey, don't judge me, okay? My mind is just weird. And this moment showed me why Doom 64 may be better than the original. Instead of one cyber demon, you get 
two cyber demons. Yes, and no, this sucks. But once I overpowered them, I really started to feel like the Doom Slayer. From mission 24, you jump to mission 28. 25 through 27 are just fun missions that I only found through cheat codes. Well, fun, because they're hard as shit. I still will not try to beat these. I have to keep some semblance of respect for myself. Finally, we're met with the mother demon, the bitch who spawned all these fiends. She has two attacks. Her main attack is sending three lines of fire at you which force you up in the air, losing control. And let's be honest, there wasn't much control in the first place with the N64 controllers. And four blood rockets that lock on and are as fast as hell. I could only beat this boss with the invincibility cheat when I was younger, but she still intimidated me, somehow as if she was stronger than my cheat codes. As an adult, I finally beat her legit. Actually, I, I made her sprite get clipped on the wall so she couldn't move and her attacks couldn't reach. <laughs> Yay for glitches. But she was as hard and as annoying as I remembered. I had forgotten to look for the secret levels which, if you took the time to explore, unlike me, you could find three demon keys which makes the whole fight like taking candy from a hell baby. That would explain the soundtrack. Finally, the mother of all demons is dead. The blood pours from your eyes as you stand in defiance. As the only marine to endure this slaughter, you decide to remain in hell and ensure no demon ever rises again. The end. Or is it? That line about remaining in hell to keep killing demons sounds a little familiar, right? Well, back in 1997, this line was just meant to sound badass, and, and it does. But, and I only found out about this while writing this review, the re-release version has new levels that unlock once you beat the Mother Demon. Or if you find the secret level Hectic hidden in Mission 1, which I also did for this review, and fuck that level. So I went back to my PS4, turned the game on, and sure enough, when you hit New Game, the option for The Lost Missions appears. The story of The Lost Missions is as follows. Mother Demon had a sister. Sister mad you dropped a whole house of whoop ass on Mother Demon. Kicks you out of hell, but Doom Guy like, hell no. Comes back, kills sister by dropping said house of whoop ass again. It felt really nice going through six new classic Doom 64 levels, but they were fucking difficult. Each one is filled to the brim with the toughest of Doom enemies, with the final level being littered with nightmare imps, hell knights and barons, pain elementals, and manky boys firing all they can at you. But once again, you're re-equipped with the Unmaker, and the goal of this mission is to find the three demon keys and fight the mother demon's sister, Resurrector. You had not expected to be torn from hell so soon after your fateful decision. The plans of the Sister Resurrector to exterminate you have failed. A grim vision takes hold of your mind as the demon carcasses steam in your wake. Stretched before you is a path of perpetual torment. A path through doom. This is the direct link tying Doom, Doom 2, Final Doom, even though I count those more as just fan levels, which they are, and Doom 64, all to Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, as this is the line uttered by Hell in the Testament of the Doom Slayer. And 
I'm not gonna lie, this blew my mind. Oh, also, while doing research for this game, underneath Doom characters, it had Doctor Doom and Mola Ram and Lao Shea from Temple of Doom. So with the Doom 64 re-release version completed, how does it hold up after all these years? Was it worth revisiting? And would I let my own son play this just like I did when I was his age? As a game, and a Doom game at that, it is still fantastic. If the dark and brooding atmosphere and music aren't for you, you can just mute the in-game music and put on the Doom soundtrack from any of the other Doom games and have a great time. The gunplay is still very fun and satisfying, even though it still suffers from the repetitive nature as I mentioned in the first Doom review. But this isn't enough to make one stop playing it. Each mission is designed with so much love and detail. Even in the new Lost missions you can see the love the creators put into the level design. This game is one of my happiest childhood memories, even if I feel like it did scar me a little bit. Those moans and babies crying are legit creepy, okay? But out of everything I mentioned, it's the memories of sitting next to my dad and watching him get excited and laughing as he mowed down demons with a chain gun that are my most fondest. It mainly feels like Doom with a new paint job and a possessed soundtrack. It's like Doom's composer was Slash from Guns N' Roses, while Doom 64's composer was Reagan McNeil. If you didn't care for the old school style of the OG Doom games, you can probably give this one a pass. As for comparing Doom 64 to the original, as a horror action game, it's wonderful. As a fast paced, hard rockin' action game, not as much. So, would I let my son play this at his age right now just like I did? This one's a bit of a tricky one for me because this game is genuinely creepy. Now, if he sat with me and watched me play it, that I'd be a little bit more okay with because that's exactly what I did with my dad growing up. Although for him, I'd probably wait about another year or two. Uh, do I think you should play the game? Well, if you're a fan of the classic Doom games, then absolutely. Overall, I give Doom 64 4 <coughs> out of 5 for great and atmospheric level design, a great overall sound design, and for an actual difficult, challenging campaign. As for games I would let my son play, I'm going to give that a give it a year or two. Uh, as for childhood trauma, I give this game uh, five crying babies out of five. Yes, game, you have permanently traumatized me. <laughs> Who puts crying babies in a game? You got a friend in me. Folks might be a little bit smarter than I am Bigger and stronger too Maybe But none of them could ever love you the way I do It's me and you And 